I have? Okay. Well, um, all right. So, where did uh, this project come from? It came from the observation that a lot of my girl students in my introductory programming classes, and even the web design classes, were doing very well, understood the material, uh, and liked the material, but were not continuing on to higher courses. Which uh, was mind boggling. students who did not continue on, you know, so, you know, what were the options, what, what, what's the matter, what's, what's the problem? And they, a lot of them told me it was just really the environment. A lot of the higher level classes were dominated by boys, not just normal boys, but very geeky, nerdy boys. Yeah, very geeky, nerdy boys. And so, they, What size were the classes? I'm sorry? What size were the classes? The classes in the introductory program, in the introductory classes were around 32, 33, and as they got, and the second level class was about 30, the third level class about 20, the fourth level class about 10, and so it would thin out anyway, but honestly there weren't any girls in the, uh, there was one girl in the second level class, and there were no girls in the third or fourth level class, even though I knew the girls would, would, would do fine. So I made that observation and I decided, you know what, something has to happen because I really dislike the image that a technologist has, at least in my area and maybe even the nation. You know, you think of a computer programmer, you think uh, you think of a nerdy looking guy sitting at a computer by himself just hitting the keys. And uh, that's this, not true. Uh, is this true across the country? Would you say? Oh yeah. So this graph right here is a study by the UCLA. Yeah. And um, it shows the, number, the percent of freshmen declaring computer science as a major. Yeah. And so you see, you see the ebb and flow with the, um, here's the dot com bust, you know, so everyone decided to get out of it. But you see like women, I mean, just, there's a huge gap between men and women. Is the gap getting bigger or smaller? What I've heard recently, because my data is only to 07, I heard that it's either flatlined right now, so it's not getting worse, it might be getting a little bit better, which is good, because there have been a lot of initiatives for women in technology. So that was the observation, that was the problem. And um, I decided my approach would be twofold. It would be to create a community of uh, female learners involved in the technology classes. So take them out of their male dominated classes, create a club for them, create a supportive community uh, where they can uh, be with one another and see that there are other girls who are interested in the same thing they are. And also uh, get them involved some advanced programming that reaches them where they're at right now, which is entertainment technology. So a lot of students, um, students all over the world, kids, especially in my area, have gadgets. They're all about gadgets. They're, they become very adept users of technology. But what they haven't become are adept creators of technology. And so I wanted them, I wanted to reach them where they're at, where the, the things they enjoy, entertainment technology and video games. And have them create games for an actual device because students are, are even used to creating games now uh, for computers because that's been an approach in computer science recently but they have not gone all the way to create games for hardware and so the hardware I use was the Microsoft Zoom so something that looks like this and Microsoft so Microsoft makes game programming for the Microsoft Zoom very accessible uh, using some very cutting edge technologies. Uh, Microsoft Visual Studio, which is a very, it, it is the actual professional work, uh, workspace for programmers. Um, XNA Game Studio and C Sharp Programming Language, which is uh, one of the top ten programming languages in the world. So the idea is that I didn't dumb down anything for these girls. I wanted them, I wanted to retain them for future courses. Also get them involved in some real, real authentic uh, technology, and so that's where I think the innovation lies in this project. Uh, the, the tools they were working with, so the hardware and the software, um, and the methodology we used, the pedagogy I used to lead them through the process was all authentic, and so um, we modeled uh, our practice. 
practices of what folks do in game design. And so one of the things we did was we utilized a methodology called pair programming. So uh, realizing that women are more social, interactive creatures than, than boys, especially boys, um, uh, pair programming allows them to work at one computer, one keyboard, one mouse, together in a group of two or three. And so uh, a girl student would be on the keyboard and um, her peers would be next to her, and usually it was in groups of two, and one would be the driver. It's almost like uh, rally class racing, uh, like driving. One would be on the steering wheel, the, the keyboard, and one would be next to her, and they would uh, talk about the project. One would be looking over the other one's shoulder, making sure all the code was written properly, and then they would switch roles. And so this gave uh, the programmers defined roles, but they also switched roles as well. So they understood the whole project as a whole. So, uh, you know, objective one was community, and they tutored one another, they mentored one another. They really, uh, they wanted to actually, the, the leaders wanted to make it almost like a sorority. And with uh, big sisters and little sisters, it was, it was great. So this picture right here uh, is a picture of uh, Molly, a second year student, tutoring Tara, a first year student. And this was all on their own. Um, they just decide that on their own. Uh, this is a picture of some of the girls in the club with, with the Microsoft Zooms. And, um, and so objective one was community. Objective number two was um, the idea of 21st century skills, which was addressed through the authentic hardware and software and the, the process we used to create the game. Uh, the third objective was um, So the, the re another reason why we use authentic hardware and software, and we chose something so um, uh, rigorous as game programming, which is really actually, you ask any computer science programmer, it is the most rigorous type of programming you can do, game design, because it involves so much. Um, I mean, these girls were so confident. They, they knew more than the boys, and they knew they knew more than the boys, uh, because we we studied uh, some of this uh, C Sharp programming, XNA, in class already, but because they had uh, an experience creating actual, uh, you know, going through the whole process and creating an actual game, they had that supplemental experience. Uh, they knew everything that the boys knew and more. And so, what, what were the actual physical results? We doubled the number of girls in our higher level computer science classes. And even this year, we added even one more. So we now 2.2 times as many people, or, or something like that. Um, the girls scored an average of a four out of five on the AP exam, which is excellent. That means that they all got college credit. So um, most schools, if you get a three, you get college credit. The higher level schools, it's four. And so two of my girls, uh, the actual leaders of the group, went on to top five computer science schools in the nation. Is this something that can be transferred to other schools? Yeah. Or so it rely on your charisma. Ah, thank you. That's a great idea. So the idea of scaling up. Yeah. yeah. Here, now the computer finally updated. I can. Uh, you have a website, and I'll stop recording and let y'all talk. I don't have a website. You don't. But where can they find out about what you're doing online? Is there a place online? Uh, there's a YouTube video of my project. How do they uh, find that? Just Google Pat Yarkradic. 